You know, as time went yes. by, he had a reputation. He wanted to preserve the glamour that had come with fame mm -hmm. and money. And uh, he had his own island. You know, he owned his own island somewhere way up in the, in the, And he he hated Hollywood. He'd get into tantrums, you know, fighting with these idiots who control the place. So uh, this is, you see, what I see, I think is a good example of a person who really did have and probably all his life retained a great talent, uh -huh. but he didn't really have a place to, to, to present that talent from the purity of his heart. He yes. had to say things he didn't want to say. Yes. Now, my brother and his wife went into acting, and they were successful. They became stars, but they said things they didn't want to say. They, they did things which they didn't believe in because it would advance their career. I don't know if they would agree with me. Well, they wouldn't like me to say it. I'll leave it at that because, as I said, this is something that I cannot add to. I'm not really literate in this matter, but as I have contributed in my own humble way, I think, you know, to um, append something uh, to what you have mentioned um, based on my experience, which is most certainly not in any way glamorous, um, I believe that uh, maintaining contact with sense of marvel, mm -hmm. everything that just mm -hmm. appears before us, mm -hmm. um, is more. Mm -hmm frankly, more uh, enlivening to me and more uh, worthy of, of mm -hmm. admiration than any movie ever could be. Absolutely. But the, the whole problem with the setting which allows you to build up an accretion of references to your own glory mm -hmm. is that, that you are accumulating inner furniture yes. which prevents you from seeing these things. Yes, with exactly. Glory. So you're walking around, you know, when, is, when am I going to be admired yes. again? You see? That was horrible. I don't yes. want that life. You know? And yet, if I became an actor and everybody was going like that, mm -hmm. you know, I would begin to, you know, either I'd be spitting at them to get away from them and not you know, <laughs> showing up at my yes. my auditions, or else I would be kowtowing and I would I would fall into it and I would just go along with the stream. So, so your manner of dealing with it is just being authentic and pursuing those promptings that God placed in your heart to serve the poor yes. in whatever way is possible? Well, particularly the suffering in convalescent homes. Yes. I know this lady and she's uh, incredibly sweet. She's a Filipina. Mm -hmm. She's probably around 55, still pretty, missing one leg, in a, confined to a wheelchair. And she's like a child. She calls me father and she's like that. And she's mm -hmm. wonderful. But this there's absolutely not a bone of insincerity in her that I know of, and she's always going to be there. I mean, until she dies, she'll probably be living in that place. And she's humble, and she's totally accepting. And this is a wonderful statement. I mean, this is a wonderful statement about people. Here's this humble, childlike woman who has accepted a horribly demeaning and limiting mm -hmm. life. Yes. yes. And uh, so, I mean, I'm humbled when I get into contact with this, and I feel that, that is really where God wants me to be. I think that's what Mother Teresa did for me, is to bring me to the realization that it's the poorest of the poor, wherever you find them, that really need you most. You know? Wonderful. Thank you. So